Good morning, and welcome to Wagon Town Chapel, where we can all come together and praise our awesome God. Would you please bow with me and we start in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we have an opportunity to come into this building to come as a family of brothers and sisters in Christ who love you. We still have this opportunity in the world today to be together, whether we are young children in the Lord, whether we are young men and women in our education and knowledge of you, or whether we are educated and mature fathers and mothers in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Uh, Lord, we are just so thankful that we can still be here and pray and praise you and worship you. Uh, let us abound now in our works, in our glory that you have given us to give you all the praise and all the glory. And we ask all of this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Would you please stand and join me as we sing hymn 391, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. There's a sweet true today we leave here revived refreshed and challenged as well you can follow along in your bulletin for the announcements we do welcome you to wagon town chapel here this morning it's july the 24th and we pray as i say each and every week that it's a blessing for you to be here and god's bless us with a beautiful day a warm one that's been warm the last couple of days for sure and uh but praise him for it just a few announcements here, just to keep the, get, just keep it moving. Tonight we do have uh, Old Mill, Camp of the Old Mill tonight. Old Mill services out there at six o'clock this evening, uh, and so we encourage you to be out there at six o'clock. It's rain or shine, and uh, if it is happens to rain, I don't know what they're calling for, but it will be inside if it happens to rain. If not, it will be outside. And so uh, Jordan Thomas is the is this is the preacher for tonight. So we encourage you to be out the Camp of the Old Mill six o'clock. That all begins there this evening so love to see each of you out there for that there tonight uh, there's a brief vacation bible school meeting after church here today another vacation bible school briefly after church real quick just to touch base on some things and uh, next sunday next sunday night begins vacation bible school so we are a week away from vacation bible school and so make sure uh, you be praying for that thinking about that and uh, and all of that as well too if you came in early enough and saw the, the announcements on the screen, you see that, that we are in need of cookies and brownies, cookies or brownies, uh, for the last night of our Vacation Bible School. That is August the 4th, and uh, that's our closing. The parents come, and kids are here, obviously, and uh, so we need cookies and brownies. If you're willing to help out that, I'll have a sign-up next week um, on the bulletin board just so we can kind of see how many are signed up for that. But if you're interested in doing that we wouldn't need them again till august the 4th which is two thursdays away we do have rita's water ice coming and so they always are great so their water truck is going to be here for that night too so um so that's the one thing obviously vacation bible school is coming if you need registrations you can't miss the huge advertisement at the front door with the big cardboard thing that i put together two weeks ago 
And uh, in there, you'll see the registration. So if you have neighbors or friends or your own family, make sure you grab a couple registrations. They can register that night of as well, too. It all begins next Sunday night, 615. 615, next Sunday night is, uh, is when it all begins. And so make sure you make note of those things as well. You also, uh, for those that don't know, uh, one of our own shut-ins, um, Bill Martin. Bill Martin, many, many, many of you remember Bill and Joyce Martin. Um, Joyce passed away in 2018 with cancer. And then uh, since that time, it was always hard for, for Bill to get out and back. Of course, COVID then came in shortly after that. And so, but he suddenly passed away this past week. And um, uh, the services are Wednesday here. It's Wednesday, 9.30 to 11 is the viewing. 9.30 to 11 is the viewing. 11 o'clock is the service. And that will all be here at Wagon Town Chapel with the luncheon following the graveside as well too. So um, that's why you see the sympathy in there in the back of your bulletin to the Martin family. Um, so continue to be praying for each of, each of them as well. They had uh, some daughters and obviously their, their spouses and their kids, grandkids and all of that. And so much to be praying for continually there. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers as well. But I wanted to give you the update for the funeral on Wednesday here at the church. Uh, you also have, I already mentioned the uh, Vacation Bible School meeting and you can see the looking ahead on your own. You can see what's coming up as well. Uh, obviously, most of those things involve food, so we're always good at that. So uh, make sure you make note of those dates that are coming up for luncheons and, and church picnic and all of that as well, too. So I believe that's all the announcements that we have for this morning. I'm going to call up uh, Zach and Bethany and Precious Bailey as well. We have a baby dedication here this morning and with them and uh, many of you know obviously Zach and Bethany uh, Crane and uh, they've been obviously Zach grew up in this church and and all of that too I had the privilege of participating in marrying them along with another uh, pastor as well and so uh, but they are here to to dedicate little Bailey May all eyes there. That's right. I'm not going to hold you yet. I'll, I'll wait till the end. Okay? But, uh, but they've come to dedicate her to the Lord. Um, they also have their own church that they're, uh, that they're with too. And, but because of their involvement here, and, and many of you know them, and, and so they thought it would be great to, to have it here too. And so uh, for our church to be praying for them and thinking of them too. And so they are dedicating Bailey to the Lord here today, praying that she would grow to know the Lord as her personal Savior, to grow in the knowledge of that same Savior, and that they too will be uh, extremely involved in, in uh, letting her know all about Jesus as well too. And so we have them here this morning. I wanted to, to share, as I say each time here too, there's some powerful verses uh, throughout the Word of God that we um, know and a challenge to both uh, Zach and Bethany here today too, but also knowing that where our true hope lies and uh, wonderful verses all through Scripture. I always like to look at, I'm not going to read it this morning, but Jeremiah in chapter 1, God calling Jeremiah to be a prophet. Now, we don't know what... Bailey is going to grow up to be and how the Lord is going to use her. But we do know, according to Scripture, that when God called Jeremiah, he knew him before he was even in his mother's womb. And even before that, he already had a purpose and a plan for Jeremiah's life. In that case, was to ordain him, to call him to be a prophet. Now for Bethany, or for, excuse me, Bailey, <laughs> Bailey, is that... God has already, already, even before that conception of her, before she took her first breath and before her first heartbeat, she was valuable and she is life. And God has already a purpose and a plan for her precious life to which right now she knows nothing about. 
but I know that you are here, both of you. Obviously, grandparents, great-grandparents here today, family, cousins, all of these things, many here representing Little Bailey. And so they are highly involved. And the precious thing that you both have today is that you both have on both sides of your family a love for Jesus. And that is a tremendous thing. It's not only you two, which I know you both know the Lord as your Savior, but you have a family to which has a tremendous legacy in their knowledge and their own Savior as well, too. And so Bailey has a tremendous, tremendous uh, footsteps to follow in, in those who have come on before her. But I wanted to just to read Psalms 139 just briefly here and just a reminder of what God does. And David writes these things. He says, For you have possessed my reins. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, that my soul knoweth them right well. My substance or my body was not hid from you, from the Lord. When I was made in secret, that was before you guys even knew she was even beginning to form. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or not fully formed. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as they were, there was none of them. So all my days were written. God already knows. And then I close with this, verse 17. How precious are your thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them, that if I were to count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. That God's thoughts towards little Bailey is precious. More than any grain of sand in the entire world. Obviously, we know that we read all through scripture dedications there too. Jesus dedicated. Obviously, um, Hannah dedicating her son to the Lord. And God would use him in the temple and all of that as well. And so we follow all of that. And then Deuteronomy tells us to raise up our kids with scripture all over the place. On the walls, on our doorposts, and so that they know who Jesus is. And so that's why little Bailey's here today. Losing her shoes and everything <laughs> else up here. So, Zach and Bethany, I want to ask you a, cu a couple of questions. All you have to reply is we do. Just like the day I married you, you had to say I do. Do you recognize that Bailey is a gift from God and you are only borrowers of her and that you both thank and glorify God for the gift of your precious daughter? We do. And do you accept the joys and responsibilities of parenting? I know you do, but... Promise to give proper love and care to little Bailey through her life. We do. And will you help, with the help of God that he provides, do you commit to teach Bailey the fullness of God's word and demonstrate through your own example and your own witness what it means to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul? We do. And for the congregation here today, will you faithfully pray for both Zach and Bethany, and obviously Bailey, as much as you are able to that God would work in little Bailey's life, that she would come to the understanding of who Jesus Christ is to her. Even understanding her own sin and knowing her need of a Savior. And you can signify to saying that we, we do. Do you signify that you will pray for them and think of that? Gonna back up. All right. <laughs> Let me pray God's blessing on her life and dedicate little Bailey to the Lord here this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I hold in my arms right now a precious little girl, one to whom you knew even before the foundations of the world. 
and you already have a purpose and a plan for her precious little life. I pray, Lord, as she grows and as Zach and Bethany parent, that you would bless them, that you would use them, that you would encourage them and strengthen them, give them words to say, even as she grows older, even through those precious and what many call difficult teenage years. God, I pray that she would know you as her Lord and Savior, that she would grow in the knowledge of you. And I pray that you would, Lord, uh, work in her life even now today. Lord, Zach and Bethany, dedicate her to you, knowing that without you, they can do nothing. So they offer, Lord, her back to you, knowing that they are just borrowers of her. We thank you for little Bailey's life. We pray for your continued working. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In, uh, on behalf of the church, obviously we have a uh, dedication certificate in here. You're, you are to sign the dedication in there too. And then, of course, uh, she probably already does, but she gets her own little pink Bible too. Okay? So we'll give that to her, and hopefully one day she'll be carrying that to Sunday school somewhere down the line as she gets older. We love you both. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to go right to our care and prayer this morning. You can follow along in your bulletin for those listed there. I do have a few updates on things to, to add to. Uh, pray for Bill Vitri. Bill Vitri, you can add him to the... To the uh, to the bulletin, we'll add him to the bulletin, but you can add him to your prayer list too. He's been having a lot of neck pain and everything else, and it's been going down his arm, and, and they have him on a bunch of medicines, which is also doing other things, messing up his stomach and all of that. He did have an MRI Friday, but he won't know those results till later this week or this week sometime. So pray for him as he is going through a lot of neck pain and all of that, but trying to figure out what caused, caused that and what it is as well too. Um, we have three of our own in Chester County Hospital this morning. Uh, Pearl Sorensen, one of our um, shut-ins, she's in uh, Chester County Hospital with pneumonia. So uh, she is doing a little better. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to see her later this afternoon. I have not yet seen her. I think she went in yesterday or Friday. Um, but, uh, so be praying for her. And, but I, I think she is improving some. Uh, she's 98 or somewhere around there. So, but, but pray for Pearl, pray that God would work in her life and her body and she can come home back to where she is and uh, quickly as possible. And so that's one. Uh, Dave Grow is in Chester County Hospital. He's been having uh, prostate issues and he has to have surgery. And so, but he's in there because there's some blockages, things going on. So he's in a lot of pain and they're trying to work through that. But the surgery is not even scheduled yet. I think he meets with the doctor the 2nd of August, and then it has to be scheduled from there. So just pray for him. He's in Chester County this morning as well. And then also Bill Pratt is in the hospital as well. As we've been talking about everything to which he's already been going through with, with the uh, cancer and all of that, um, I, I think I mentioned last week <clears throat> that he had slipped off the bed and fell and he, um, his hip has been re really, really bad. Uh, he got an MRI uh, Friday, I think it was too, or this past week, and he, is, um, he hasn't gotten the results back from that, but he was in such pain um, yesterday, I think yesterday morning, he couldn't walk. So Judy took him to the hospital, and so he is there now. I talked with her this morning, and he's not much better, didn't get much sleep. And so just pray, pray for Bill and Judy again, mentally, emotionally, on top of everything else, physically. He has arthritis in his hip, he has arthritis in his wrist, and everything else. And he's obviously on top of that, all the cancer stuff that he's dealing with, with the uh, shots and the chemo pills that he's taken. So those are uh, three that we have in Chester County right now. Uh, and actually, I think there's a fourth, Dave Dunn, which is Jeannie Dunn's husband. Jeannie Dunn's husband. He's had problems before. He can't keep things down. He has something with his esophagus 
and uh, he, he can't eat. And when he can't eat, obviously, he loses an extreme amount of weight. And so they had to take him to the hospital because he wasn't keeping anything down. And uh, they do have a procedure they're going to do, but his potassium is so low right now that they will not do the procedure until the potassium gets up. And uh, she told me today they, they gave him so much potassium and it only went up like one point. So they're going to continue to do that today and hopefully the next couple of days and he'll be able to have the procedure as soon as possible. So that's, that's Jeannie Dunn's husband, Dave Dunn. He is in our bulletin here. As much as everyone else too that's on here, and I continue to be praying for all of them that are going through so much and we need to be praying for each other spiritually. Paul also prayed for the church that they would grow in the knowledge of the Lord. And so may we not only pray for the physical, but may we pray for each other and spiritual as well, too. Obviously, our country asks you to be praying for vacation Bible school starting next Sunday night. And pray for good weather so we can do some games outside and all of that. And obviously, pray for the hearts of the children that will be here. And pray for the adults, their hearts, too. After a long day at work or whatever else, and then you got to show up and direct kids for two, two hours can be also a long, very, very long week. So pray for those that are helping out too. Let me pause and let me pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning and so gracious and thankful that you are there. That you're a God that is never absent. You're, you're, you're a God that is, that is always present. God, that's one of your one of your many attributes, that you are everywhere. We know that your word promises us that where two or three are gathered, that you are in the midst. And Lord, as we earlier sang this morning, that we pray for the Spirit's presence here. And we pray for a moving of the Spirit in our lives, in our hearts, through the word of God. We pray that you would uh, continue to work in each of us that we would grow in the knowledge of who you are understanding and knowing who the God of the Bible is not the God of this of this of what how this world defines you but Lord what your word defines you and Lord may we take all of you for we cannot have parts of you but we can either have none of you or all of you we pray today that you would help us to grow in greater knowledge of who you are. We pray that we would ask more than just what we're looking for in our own lives, but that we would come before you today and really, Lord, seek to know you and to not only ask for changes of what we need, physically, emotionally, mentally, but that we would also, Lord, just take time to thank you. God, we are thankful today for your grace and your mercy, both to which we deserve nothing, and yet, Lord, you bestow grace and mercy daily. You give us what we don't deserve, and you hold back in many times what we do deserve. So, Father, we're grateful today for that. We pray for the hurting and the sick today. Those that are dealing with much, Lord, we pray for Bill and Judy. We pray for them particularly, Lord, this morning. And just the uh, monotonous one thing after another in Bill's life, I pray that you would encourage both he and Judy today. We pray that you would give doctors wisdom, help the MRIs to come back and they would be able to see what's going on. We pray that it would not be major, that it would just need rest. But we pray for your hand. We pray for healing continually with the cancer that he fights. We do pray, Lord, for others, Lord, this morning, for, for Dave Crow and for Pearl Sorensen, for Bill Vitry. We ask that you would be with them in each of their own physical battles and ailments. And we pray for wisdom from doctors as they run tests and do different things. And we pray that you would work in each life. May they be fixed and focused on you through it all. We do ask that you would be with each one that's here. The worries and the stresses that are on their minds that you know all about. May we lay them at your feet. May we turn it over to you so we can be fully fixed on your word today and be encouraged and strengthened through it. I pray today also for our country, our nation. We pray for our president, vice president, each and every single one in places of authority. We ask that you would work in their lives. I pray in each one that they would come to the saving knowledge of you. 
pray for a working in our nation that we have fallen so far away. And in many ways, Lord, it feels like we've fallen so far that, Lord, you can take your hand off of us easily. But again, as we ask, Lord, for your, in your, in your uh, wrath that you would continue to remember mercy. Work in our own lives, Lord. Help us to see the things that we need to change instead of pointing fingers at what everybody else needs to change. Lord, I pray those things in my own life this morning. We thank you for all of these things. We think of our missionaries today, all of them scattered abroad. We pray for their support, for their ministries, for their encouragement. We ask that you would work and meet the needs of each one. We again praise you for who you are. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Children's sermon. (laughs) If I can have those going to junior church, can meet me down front quickly. How's everybody doing today? Good. Who can tell me what this is? A A pair. Do you think it's real or fake? Fake? Somebody come hold this for me, okay? Cooper, can you come take it? I want you to hold it, and I want you to pass it down, okay? Pass it down to each of the kids, all right? And then I'll, let, I'll ask you again. That is a pair. You do have a correct answer on that. Okay, so now that you have touched it and held it, real or fake? Fake. What causes you to think it's fake? It feels like plastic. Okay, it feels like plastic. It's probably lighter than a real pair, right? But it doesn't it look real. I mean, even when I grabbed it this morning, I was like, this thing's been in the attic at the church. It should be really raw and nasty right now, right? But it looks real. It does. I want to encourage you guys. We're going to talk to your moms and your dads today and grandparents and all of that here today in the, in the Word of God in our study of 1 John that, that, that there are people in the world who are real believers and there are fake. I wouldn't call them believers, but they're fake. And there are fake teachers, false teachers as well. And the only way that you can know of what somebody is teaching you from the Word of God, if it's accurate, is if you know the Word of God. How did you guys know that that pair was fake? You had to first know what? What a pair really is. You have to know what the real thing is. And if you don't know the real thing, you wouldn't know that that was fake unless you bit into it. Right? And so when... We hear the word of God, no matter where it is, even in Wagontown Chapel. We have to compare scripture to scripture. And you have to know the word of God. Because the more you know the word of God, the more you know Jesus, when you hear somebody else talking about him, and it might not be the right things, you can say, that's not Jesus. That's not what the word of God says. Even though they, they sound and they look very much well like they do. But I know Jesus so much. I know what the Bible says enough that I can say that that is wrong or that that is right. And so I want you guys and the adults, we're going to cover this in more detail. But you guys have to understand who Jesus is. And the only way you know Jesus is through what? The Bible. You have to study the Bible so that way you can say what or know what is right and what is wrong because this tells you it all. This is your standard. This is your measuring stick. Nothing else. And so when you know Jesus and you know the Bible, you'll know. Even when somebody else talks about Jesus in the Bible, you'll know if they're speaking what is true from his word or if it's false. But you won't know the real thing or the false thing unless you really know the real thing. 
okay? Study Jesus, study the Word of God. You guys can go to junior church. You can just set that right on the pew. you please turn to him 526 the solid rock and you know what let's stand this is a really good old hymn that i think we should stand for as we honor god and we'll sing the first and the last verse my hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpets down, oh, Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I ask for your help, for nothing of me will, will be anything. But if it's of all of you, it will be everything. And so I pray, Lord, as I pray each and every week, that it would not be my words, but that it would always and every way be yours. So may we leave here, Lord, maybe even challenged today, but also may we be leaving here confident in knowing who the God of the Bible is, who Jesus Christ is, so that way we can be able to decipher against the Antichrist of this age. I ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. You had just seen with the children's sermon, with fruit. I don't have anything bigger than a dollar bill here today, so it's not that exciting, but... The same is true if I were to hold this dollar bill and, you know, when um, people are asked to be counterfeit checkers of money, the American Banking Association, in their training program to help their tellers, they tell their tellers never to look at a counterfeit bill. All they do hour after hour, day after day, is handle authentic money currency until they are so familiar with what is true that they cannot be possibly fooled with, with what is false. And this is how it ought to be with the word of God for you and I too. This is by Lou Nichols. I don't know who he is, a missionary and author, but he's the one that said that. A lot of people that work, if you were a cashier or whatever else and other places of work that you would too have to do things. Now they have pens that help out with that you draw a line through and if it I don't know how it works but if it uh, comes up a different color or doesn't show or whatever the case may be it's counterfeit but how do we detect that which is false and I would encourage you because I'm going to take a different route today than maybe you were taught and and I'm not saying what you were taught was wrong because it's not bad thing to know what is false and to study that which is false. But it would always be a much better thing to study that which is true. So you know what is false. We read in our text today, we are beginning in verse 18 of 1 John chapter 2. In knowing the truth. Know the truth is really what I'm titling the message today, is know the, tu the, the truth. And John has just gotten done. We've studied it the last couple of weeks. He's talked about how we know that we know Christ as our personal Savior because we are obedient to his commands. We have a love for the brethren. 
And then we looked at a few weeks ago that he challenges us in different um, age groups, not age groups, but spiritual maturity groups and talking about babes in Christ and talking about young in Christ and then talking about mature or fathers in Christ or mothers in Christ. And we looked at that over the last couple of weeks and then we looked at last week how we not ought to love the world, neither the things that are in the world. We looked at a description of many things and John gives three examples of all the sins that are categorized in those three areas. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So now again, we have been talking about over and over again that John is writing to believers. And now he comes to a most important part. Challenging them, encouraging them, reminding them would be a better word. That they know Christ, and he's going to explain that again or mention that again. But he encourages and challenges them that in this time there were false teachers. As there is today. Now he uses the terminology antichrist. And we're going to look at that in greater detail today. But John is challenging, reminding all believers. He uses that word little children here again. Now that word little children is still talking about immature. That, that one is the one talking about babe in Christ. But he's writing to all of them here. Saying that there's no group of maturity that you cannot be too careful not to be falling into that which is false. So not only babes in Christ are tricked, fooled. Not only young men and young women spiritually maturity are fooled. But also mature believers can be fooled. And so John reminds us that the important thing is to know that which is real. Know that which is true. That they would... Be careful that they would learn to pay attention and that they are still learning to do so. As we all know, no matter how often you study the word of God, you can't ever sit back and say, I know it all. We could study the scriptures our entire lives until the day God calls us home and we still will only have tip of the iceberg now. I mean, the vastness. I mean, Isaiah mentions it. Do you not know? Have you not heard of the creator of the earth? Never grows weary, neither does he tire. And then the author says there is uh, no, uh, no understanding of, you know, no matter how much we search, we can't fully understand everything there is. So let's look at verse 18 and on. It says, little children... As in the last days or the last time, as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, that is singular for a reason, shall come even now there are many Antichrists, plural, whereby we know that what it is the last time. Now he's talking about they're in the last days. So John's saying, listen, we're in the last days. Now what do you and I say today? We're in the last days. The last days is really not so much a... Uh, duration of time as much as it is a time from when Christ came into the world when he, when he died on the cross to whatever present time it is now, his last days, until the return of Christ. Last days are from the time that he ascended to the time that he comes back is the last days. Now, things change in those last days or things get more concerning more noticeable, and we don't have time to look at that. Paul talks about what last days look like. And if you see what Paul writes today, you could easily argue that we are definitely in last days, right? Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, having a form of godliness. In all the list he gives, they will be those that have itching ears, only wanting to hear from pastors what they want to hear. We are in those days. So John here talking about Antichrist, and he's really talking about really Antichrist is any that are against 
Christ. They are false teachers, those who are against Christ. They are instead of Christ. This last time I already mentioned, this last hour, Christ has done everything since the cross. It is finished. So between the time of the cross or the cross to the first coming of Christ and to the, his return, the second coming of Christ, we find ourselves in those last days. Jesus even talks about those last days in Matthew 24, and he says, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because lawlessness, lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. This is prophecy, Jesus speaking here in Matthew 24. John reminding the believers here of them. Now, he uses singular in the first one because it is talking. It says, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. There is an Antichrist. We don't have time to look at that in great detail tonight, today. But in Revelation, we know that during tribulation period, Antichrist will rise up, especially those last three and a half years, martyr many Christians, sit in the temple, want people to worship him, all being ultimately powered by Satan himself. And so the Antichrist he's talking about there is, in the singular is that one that is yet to come, but the plural one is just false teachers in general, those that are instead of Christ as well. Revelation 13 talks about the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 7 talks about the Antichrist. You can see that all in those chapters and many more too. But he says here that there are many Antichrists. Many. Those are those that are attacking the truth of the word of God. Attacking the truth of the gospel. Creating their own. Not the gospel of the word of God. They are those who themselves place themselves as gods. In fact, many times you'll hear, if you take time, you probably don't listen to it too much, I wouldn't encourage you to do so, but many of these ones talk about them being little gods. That when God comes into our life, we become little gods like he is. False. But they attack the truth of Jesus. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus talking about those who are not real Christians, but act like it sometimes. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Fake Christians, if you want to call it that. You can't be a fake Christian. It's an oxymoron, really. So John's speaking of those who acted like Christians, but really weren't. That's what he says in verse 19. They were they went out of from us, and they were not of us. If they had been of us, we, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out of us that, we might, that it might be visible that they were not of us at all. So John talking about those even in the church, and that's where you find them. Those that act like a Christian, but yet they don't stay there. Now, he's talking about the church. It could be universal church here. Those that act like believers but aren't. They're the ones to which John is talking about. So they left so that it would be seen that they weren't of the family of God. You know, how did they know? And John writes that. We talked about it before, but a tree is known by its what? Fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. The Antichrist that John is speaking of, these false teachers who he's speaking of, often blend in until fruit or lack of thereof is seen. You know, there is uh, in the parable of the tares and the wheat that Jesus gives in, in Matthew 13, 24 to 30, and I think... 
34 to 36, somewhere around there, he interprets the parable. But remember that the man goes and he throws seed. Actually, the one talking about God being the, God being the one throwing the seed and then Satan being the one throwing the other seed. But when the servant comes back and he sees that it's grown, he says, why is there tares in, in with the wheat? And the person that planted it said, I didn't even know. Because even in, even in real life, that it is hard to tell real wheat from another weed that's called darnel. And darnel looks like almost identical to wheat until the fruit appears or the uh, ears of wheat begin to appear. Darnel won't have that. But when they're side by side and they're beginning to grow, you can't tell the difference. It's actually called the false wheat, darnel. And so it's not until you see the fruit or the lack of do you know what's real wheat or darnel. And the same is true with false teachers and false believers. There has to be fruit. Fruit has to be there. We talked about many times that a, a tree is known by its fruit. They left the church, or they left, they left doctrinally. But as I said, many times not everybody leaves. Many stay, and many even pass their churches. This is not speaking of a loss of salvation. This is speaking of that they were never saved to begin with. But again, you can't, it's hard to know what the false thing is unless you know what the true thing is. So study the word, study Jesus Christ. John writes in verse 20, he uses that word but because he's explaining one group of people in verses 18 and 19, but now he's talking about believers in verse 20. But but you have an unction, or you have a, a, a anointing. You have the Holy Spirit, the Holy One, and you know all things. Because that you have the indwelling of the Spirit, you can know those things. You can know the truth. Why? Because He is the truth. John 14, verse 17 says, Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells in you and will be in you. Jesus speaking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Verse 16, verse, or John 16, 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Again, Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit here. He's the spirit of truth. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So John saying, you know what the truth is. In fact, the truth indwells you through the Holy Spirit. So he says you should know the truth. So when you know the truth, you'll know what is false. But if you don't know the truth, you don't know what's false. That's why it's important to, as these people do when they study money, to know how to look for counterfeit. The kids wouldn't even know, and, and you wouldn't. If I were to have you be up close and look at that fake pair, you wouldn't even tell it was fake until you held it. Because the weight is different. And the only reason you knew that, because you have eaten or looked at or seen fruit hundreds of times, thousands of times in your life. So you know what is real to be able to know. Even the kids knew it was fake. Verse 21, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, 
and that no lie is of the truth. He's wanting them here because they, they know the truth. And when you know the truth, you can better decipher what is false. As I said, I go back to that money illustration. The same is true when we know Jesus, we know the word of God. When we know the gospel, that's ultimately what he's talking about here. As we go on, he's really talking about the gospel. Do you know the true gospel? What is the true gospel? It is faith alone in Christ alone. It is Jesus plus what? Nothing. It is Jesus plus nothing. Not church attendance, not your money, not your good works. It is Jesus plus nothing. Why? Well, Jesus tells us in John 15, for without me you can do nothing. The gospel is faith alone in the finished work of Christ alone. That he died, that he rose again. That he's a holy God. We are sinners. And we have no hope of heaven apart from what Christ has done. Not what Tim Kranz has done. Not what you have done. But what Christ has done. The gospel is Christ alone. We read in verses of like such as Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. We know them well, for by grace are you saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. It's not a result of work so that no one may boast. Galatians 1, 8. But even if we, this is Paul speaking, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one preached to you, let him be accursed. And then it repeats it again. And we have said before, so now I say it again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to which you have received, and that is the one from the word of God, what should they be? Accursed. But so many are fooled by false gospels because they like that version a little better, don't they? I want God to just be a God of love. I don't want a God to be a God of wrath or a jealous God or a holy God. Or I don't like that kind of God. You can find churches that won't talk about that kind of God. But that God is not the God of the Bible. So Paul, or excuse me, John reminding them. Then he describes what to look for. Verse 21 or 22 and 23 he says this. This is what an antichrist looks like. It is a liar, but he that does, he denieth that Jesus is the Christ. So what is, what is the leading attribute of a false teacher or an antichrist, as John says? It is one that denies Jesus as Christ. He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. There are a lot of people who believe in God. There are a lot of people who believe that Jesus is a good man, that he's a good person prophet that he was a good teacher but if he is not God in human flesh if he is not the savior the one to whom saves from sin from the wrath of God then that's not the Jesus of the Bible Then he says, whoever denies the Son, the same hath the Father. He that denies the Son hath the Father also. So some people say, oh, I believe in God, but I don't believe Jesus. 
Well, we know that Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus tells us that time and time again. And let me remind you that even the demons believe in God, don't they? You think Satan believes in God? Sure he does. Satan born again? No. The Bible says that even the demons believe and they tremble. You know, it's sad that when a demon fears God more than a believer does. You know why a demon fears Jesus? Because even they know him. They believe in him. We read in verses like John 5, 23... Speaking of Jesus and the, or the Father and the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So you can't believe in God and not Jesus and, and be a believer. John 12, 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And who sent him? The Father. So you can't believe the Father without believing the Son to be a believer. A lot of people do, but they're not born again. They deny that Jesus is even God, just a teacher, just a good, good, a good person, good prophet. So what do we do? John jumps back to you and I, or the ones to whom he's writing, Believers here. What do we do then? He says, let that therefore abide in you. What is that? Let the gospel, the word of God, the Holy Spirit abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning, again, then he says, shall remain in you. You also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So what do we do as believers? Continue in the word. We get to know him more. We abide in the word. We hold on to the gospel. We continue in it. John 15. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, right? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will bear much fruit. That there has to be abiding in the word and there has to be the word abiding in us. We talked about that many times. So stay close to what you have heard and known from the beginning. What's the beginning? It's the gospel. Cling to it. Don't forget what the gospel is. Don't just be saved and say, yeah, I got saved when I was 10 years old. Or I was saved, God, God, God saved me when I was 10 years old. And then the gospel isn't relevant in your life the rest of your life. It's continual every day. The gospel is who we are. Over time, we often like to trade in that which gets old, do we not? People do it all the time. I'm tired of this car. I think it's time to trade it in for a new one. And many other things that we do. And this is what a lot of fake want to do with the gospel. Well, there's a that's that that's that's that gospel you read about there. But this is this is 2022, Tim. There's a new gospel. Is there a new gospel? There's only one. There's only one. It does not change with society, with current events, with feelings. The gospel does not change. I don't care who you are. You know why it doesn't change? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is why he cried on the cross. What? It is finished. It's done. There can be nothing added to it. You can't come up with a new gospel because the old one doesn't fit your feelings right. Give me a break. I'm tired of this feeling stuff. 
You either cling to Jesus or you cling to nothing. There's no in between. Is he who he says he is? He is. This is what John started out with. This is how you know if you keep his commandments. And then John even explains it right here in verse 24. 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. You can only promise eternal life if you are the giver of it. It's faith alone in Christ alone, what he has done. You can't add or change it. Nothing in the word. In fact, we read that in Revelation. If you add or take away anything, big deal, isn't it? Colossians 2.8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to the human traditions, according to the element spiritual uh, spirits of the world and not according to Christ. So even Paul writing to the church of Colossae because they too struggle. We all can struggle with being Straight, led astray. So Paul ran to the church of Colossians and said, see that nobody takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition and not according to Christ. 9 and 10 of that same chapter says, for in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily. In him does it dwell bodily. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. What does Solomon say? You should probably know the key phrase of Ecclesiastes. Nothing new under the sun, Solomon says, right? Nothing new under the sun. The gospel is the same if it's the gospel of the word of God. What did Paul challenge Timothy to do? But as for you, continue. This is what John's saying too. So we have two key important people of the church. Paul and Peter. Or excuse me, Paul and John. Peter was too. But John here writing. And Paul writing to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed. Don't look for something new. Don't look for something to something different. And knowing from whom you've learned it and how... From childhood you have been acquainted with sacred, uh, sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The gospel brings eternal life. And then John closes with these words and I'm done. Verse 26. Why did he write all these things to them? Verses 18 and down. So that they would not be Seduced, or that they would not be, that word means to be led astray. I have written these things concerning them so that you would not be led astray. Don't be led astray. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to God. So this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. Verse 13 and 14 of that same chapter. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, dis disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. It's easy to be led astray, especially if you're a babe in Christ. But also if you're a young woman or man, spiritually maturity we're talking about in Christ, even if you're a father or a mother in maturity in Christ. This is why John addresses them all. All my little children, we all have some learning and continuing to do. Do you know Jesus do you know the word so much so that when if you were to turn on something on the radio or the TV 
that you could say that person speaking true of what Jesus really is or that person speaking nonsense. It's hard to tell what's false unless you know what is first true. So know the truth. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time in your word today. I pray that we be challenged this morning. Lord, help us to know that none of us are mature enough to not be led astray. It can be easily done. If we're not remaining in the word, if we're not continuing in the word, if we're not continuing to know the God of the Bible, continuing and, and continuing to know you more and more, Lord, it's easy to be led astray. It's easy to say, you know what, that sounds good. That sounds, that sounds right. We know that Satan uses, Lord, he is an imitator. He is not a originator. Lord, he imitates you to trick many to fall away, many to not even come to you to begin with. I pray, Lord, that as believers we will strive to know you more, to continue daily in your word, not be uh, just satisfied with Sunday morning messages, but that we would strive daily to know you more so that way we aren't led astray because we're holding firm to that which is authentic. We're holding firm to that which is the real thing. We're holding firm to Jesus Christ. The gospel which changes not daily in any way. I praise you for all of these things. Help us to be followers of you as dear children. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing in closing just the first verse of hymn 553. Nearer my God to thee. Father, give us a good rest of the day. Lord, help us to be true of that song we just sang. Lord, may we be nearer to you. And that only comes by relationship with you, study of your word and who you are. Bless the day. Bring us back safely to Old Mill tonight at 6 o'clock. And give us a good week. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.